But first, part two of our series on water quality in North Carolina. In the southeastern North Carolina community of Lake Waccamaw, residents say logging companies and other industries are threatening some of the state's unique wetland habitats. And scientists say time is running out for the waterway and the area's ecosystem. Dr. Tom Linden has more on the problems affecting the area and what its future may hold. A canoe trip down a serene tributary of the Wacoma River in southeastern North Carolina reveals only a small part of what experts call one of the world's most diverse ecosystems. The river and its streams are the arteries for the system. The four by six mile Lake Wacoma is the heart of the subbasin, and the surrounding green swamp stores and cleanses the waters of the Wacoma. The Wacoma is one of the few places north of Florida that's home to alligators, and it hosts an abundance of wildlife. Some species here can't be found anywhere else on Earth. Fish like the Wacoma silverside and mollusks like this Wacoma spike. Are you ready? People who have spent their lives here say they fear losing the intricate system that is the Wacoma. Green Swamp resident Grady Simmons says the wetlands he knew as a boy are vanishing. Really, we only got a, just a small portion of the Green Swamp left. Very few acres, you know, compared to what it was 30 years ago. And Lake Wacoma resident Kathy Nielsen, who's chairman of the environmental group Friends of the Wacoma, says she fears the lake and river will share the same fate as the swamp. There are too many people out there that are trying to ruin it. And they're trying to ruin it for money. Environmental experts say residents have reason to be concerned. Stanley Riggs, a geologist who has studied the Wacoma for the last six years, says many local industries threaten the system. When we want to change the swamp into something else, we ditch and drain it to get the water off the land faster so we can use it for some other purpose. And the minute you do that, then you change that ecosystem. It's no longer a wetland ecosystem. Some industries, like hog and poultry operations, suck groundwater from the system. And Riggs says local logging companies, through an extensive ditch network, have totally changed the landscape of the swamp. And so to turn the swamp lands into uh, pine plantations, you have to dr dry up the lands. Riggs says drying up the wetlands makes water flow through faster, carrying sediment into the rivers and lake. The fast outward flow disables the swamp's natural sponge-like ability to store water. The floor of this swamp forest looks perfectly dry, but just dig down inches and you'll reach water. That's because this part of the upper Wacoma River Basin acts like a giant filter, collecting water and purifying it before releasing it downstream. This is a cross-section of a swamp before ditching. When it rains, water percolates through the swampland as it travels downstream. This filtering effect not only cleans the water, but allows for a more constant flow of water from swamp to river. After ditching, rainwater moves from swamp to river much more quickly, drying up the land. Since ditches bypass the filter, the river gets a large amount of water when it rains and hardly any during dry spells. It's been ditched and drained very extensively. Uh, and what we're doing now is lowering the groundwater table so there's less and less groundwater input into this system as well and at some point it'll dry up totally. Rig says the paper companies dig more of these ditches every year. Here are the ditches and roads in a 400 square mile section of the Green Swamp in 1938. And in 1955 you see the network of ditches and roads has expanded. And finally the drainage and road network in 1990. Two logging companies, International Paper and Plum Creek Timber, own most of the green swamp and use it for logging. Plum Creek Timber representatives declined to talk to us, but International Paper wildlife ecologist Steve Dubose says to preserve water quality, his company follows industry guidelines called best management practices. He says these practices include establishing buffers where trees can't be cut down within 50 feet of any water source. And he says the company is careful not to put ditches too close together. 
the uh, critical thing there is that we do not establish ditches at, a, at an interval that would affect the change from wetland to non-wetland. And he says international paper preserves habitats that contain endangered species, like this plant called pond spice. But some experts say ditching and draining vast areas of the swamp endangers far more species than it protects. Lake Waccamaw State Park Ranger Harry Edwards says unless logging companies take measures to preserve the watershed, they risk altering the natural habitats of dozens of species. There are over 52 species of fish in and around in the waters of the Waccamaw, uh, which not many other freshwater lakes have that much diversity. And the three that have evolved here um, are unique only to here, found nowhere else in the world. Geologist Stanley Riggs says time is running out for saving many of the unique plants and animals that inhabit the Waccamaw. Within a, a decade or two, we could have a completely dried up system, and I think we have to really stop and take stock of what, what we're doing. I hate to just see everything destroyed, you know, because we've lost so many plants and animals that, that we'll never see again, you know. It's a, and that's, that's what hurts, you know. My, my grandchildren won't know what it is, you know, to, to roll an old rotten log over and see a salamander crawl or something, you know, you just don't see this anymore. Grady Simmons and other Waccamaw residents say it's not just ditching and draining that threatens the ecosystem. They're fighting a proposed landfill in the Green Swamp that they say will compromise water quality. Columbus County commissioners have already approved the landfill, but local citizens continue to oppose it.